As election season fills the headlines, health care is never far from the consumer's mind. Striving to be more than just your corner pharmacy, can CVS Health deliver your portfolio the medicine it needs to beat the street? A little less than a year ago, CVS Health issued what was widely perceived to be a disappointing guidance. Over the course of the spring, the stock got hammered, but I stuck with it, telling you CVS had a bright future thanks to its merger with Aetna, the big health insurance provider. Then over the summer, Wall Street became terrified that the eventual Democratic nominee would campaign on single payer, something that would effectively put the recently acquired Aetna out of business. After that, after that started to seem less, less likely this fall, well, the stock caught fire. But even after this move, the darn thing is still incredibly cheap, selling for roughly 10 times earnings. So could the stock have a lot more upside? Let's take a closer look with Larry Merlot. He is the bankable president and CEO of CVS Health to get a better read on his company's prospects. Mr. Merlot, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Good to Great see you, to Larry. Be here. Larry, we're talking a lot about uh, the consumer taking over, the individual increasingly in charge of her health. CVS is at the heart of that move. Jim, no question. Look, we all see the challenges in healthcare. It's become expensive for many, uh, difficult to use and navigate, and all of that has created the emergence of consumerism in healthcare. You know, Jim, we look at, at the environment and how can we bring solutions to that? And we, we see three imperatives that bring that to life. The need to make healthcare local, meet people where they are, in the community, uh, in their home, even now in the palm of your hand. We've got 10,000 community touch points all across the country. 75% of the U.S. population lives within a couple miles of a CVS. Second priority, Jim, is how can we make health care more simple? Mm. And we see the opportunity to help consumers with the information, the resources that they need to make informed decisions. And, Jim, the third priority is helping peop people to achieve their best health. Jim, today, two-thirds of the country has one or more chronic diseases. It's those chronic diseases that are accounting for 70 to 80 percent of health care costs. And we know their names, diabetes, cardiovascular, hypertension, and yet people are not, are, are not achieving you know, their best health outcomes. We can and must do better. Okay, now my, my regular CVS, which I go to all the time, is I like the stuff in the front of the store. I got prescription in the back. That is not the story of the future, though. No, Jim, you, we're evolving you know, from what we know to be today's drugstore. We're calling them health hubs. They're more of a health destination. We're repurposing about 20% of the space in the front store to health-related services, expanded minute clinics, care concierges, additional services out of the pharmacy, and yet we're still offering you know, those products focused on health, beauty, personal care, and some elements of convenience. We started this time last year in the Houston, Texas market. We ended last year with about 50 stores in four markets. Jim, we're really excited in terms of what we're seeing from the consumers, the acceptance, the interest that is growing with our clients. And, you know, we've made a commitment to have about 600 hubs by the end of this year. That's 12 a week with a trajectory of 1,500 hubs by the end of 2021. And those stores do better uh, same store sales than one without? You know what, Jim? It, it's very early. It's a small sample, but we're seeing increased traffic in the stores. We're seeing higher front store margins, and we are seeing terrific utilization of the health related services. So we're really pleased with what we're seeing. One of the things I, I when I go over your uh, presentations, you and I had doctors, our parents had doctors, we had doctors, you find a G GP. People don't understand. Millennials, Gen X, they don't do that. Well, you know, Jim, you look at our minute clinics. We have now seen 48 million you know, patients. Now, that's over multiple years, but it really speaks to the accessibility of health, the convenience, and the overall experience, and the role of the nurse practitioner in the fact that in this business model, we can play a complementary role to the role of the primary care physician. Okay, let's talk about Aetna. Uh, what is Aetna doing better now that it's with you? You know what, Jim? Aetna has done a terrific job growing the government business, uh, seen terrific growth in, in both Medicare and Medicaid, and the ability to bring together the medical and pharmacy data. And you, know, you think about you know, the information that Aetna has about the, the members that they serve. You know, let's call it, what is our next best action? You know, to you know, put us on a healthier path. You know, Aetna has, as is the case with all insurers, how do you activate that? How do you create the consumer engagement? You know, that's the beauty of this combination because 
the CVS community assets actually bring that to life. So we're off to a wonderful start with our integrated model. Well, there is a lot of blame game in the system. Look, we, we had uh, Giovanni Cafario, he's the CEO of Bristol Myers. He was saying, it kind of questioned whether the pharmacy benefit managers play any role that's positive. We know that the, a lot of Democrats who are front runners even uh, wish that the whole thing would change and wipe you out. But I, I don't know, you don't seem to be the real problem when I look at the nuts and bolts. You know what, Jim, PBMs have proven the ability to reduce you know, the overall cost of pharmaceutical care. And you, know, you look at what has been done in terms of managing you know, prescription formularies and the fact that you know, the savings associated with that is getting passed back to the consumer, whether it's discounts at the pharmacy counter through the point of sale or those dollars being passed back to the consumer in lower monthly premiums you know, in their insurance. So the data validates the role that PBMs have played in reducing you know, the overall cost of pharmaceutical care. All right, now let's speak to the stock. A lot of people are very worried about the huge amount of debt that you took on. I don't think they understand how much cash flow your company generates. Yeah, Jim, you know, since the close of the transaction, it's been 13 months, we've already repaid about $8 billion of that debt. You look at cash from operations, Jim, 2019 will generate between $10, $10.5 billion. You know, so we've got ample cash to pay down the debt, reinvest back in the business. We'll you know, put in CapEx about $2.3 to $2.6 billion while maintaining our $2 dividend. So, Jim, we have a plan to, you know, delever, get our adjusted debt to EBITDA ratio back to the low three times in 2022. Very comfortable with the trajectory that we're on. Now, there were a lot of people who felt that uh, why would anyone want to buy health and beauty at CBS when they can get it delivered by Amazon? The health and beauty numbers are really holding up, though. You know what, Jim? We have really focused our front store business on the growth in those core categories, right. health, beauty, personal care. And we've been able to, you think about this new intersection of data analytics and technology, you think about the role of our extra care loyalty program, where we have been able to deliver value to our consumers in a very, very personalized way. And you know that has supported growth in those categories. Very pleased with the performance. Uh, is there, uh, do, you, do you wake up at night worried that Amazon's got some sort of pill pack killer? You know what, Jim, our organization has really been focused around, you know, how do, you, how do we make sure we don't leave any white space for disruption? And that's created to a lot of different innovations that, you know, we've been introducing. Really excited about how our care pass is performing. We tested it in a couple markets rolled it out across the country in the fall. We have now have more than a million members. And what we're seeing from those customers, increased utilization, you know, as well as a higher basket size. Well, that's exactly what we want to hear. My Chapel Trust has a huge position in CBS. Thank you for everything you do for shareholders. That's Larry Merlot. He's president and CEO of CBS Health. You know, I like this stock. I like this company. And yes, I like being a customer. They have money back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.